everyone, and welcome back to another one. Welcome to Program Code 101, the place where we learn the art and skills required to develop code. I'm your instructor, Mr. Decoder. In our previous video, we looked at the concepts of counting and totaling using loops. We also generated pseudocode using selection and iteration statements to determine the maximum and minimum values based on varying scenarios. If you missed the details of that video, please select the link above to review. In today's video, we will be looking at the concepts of arrays, including how and when they are used. We will also be generating pseudocode using one-dimensional arrays. Introduction to Arrays An array allows a number of items with the same data type to be grouped together using one name. For example, the first name of all students in a class can be grouped together because they are of the same data type, string, and are related to the same thing. The array name, along with other array features, can then be used to access each student's name. The location of each item in the array is uniquely identified by an integer value, referred to as the subscript or index. We have already discussed and seen how variables can be used in a pseudocode algorithm. While variables and arrays share a number of characteristics, the main difference between the two is that variables store only one item or value of a particular data type at a time. Arrays can store multiple items or values of the same data type in a single instance. Advantages of using an array. The main advantages of using arrays include 1. It is easier to use an array to store a number of items of the same data type than having a different variable for each data item. This idea can be illustrated using the example of storing shoes in multiple shoe boxes as opposed to using a shoe rack or shelf to store a number of pairs of shoes. It is much more effective to utilize the shoe shelf, classified as an array, than having to use individual shoe boxes, seen as variables, storing only one pair of shoes at a time. Two, it is also less time consuming to write program instructions and manipulate data when using arrays. Types of arrays. The utilization of an array can be done using various techniques. Arrays can be represented as one dimensional, which contains a single row of data, or two-dimensional, which contains a row and column of data, and multi-dimensional, which is classified as an array of arrays. For the purpose of simplicity, only the concepts of one-dimensional arrays will be discussed throughout this video. A one-dimensional array is a linear structure of data items of the same type, which are grouped together. This group of data is referenced by a single name, referred to as the array's name. Example of a one-dimensional array. The following one-dimensional array shows an array with the capacity to store eight values. Items are placed in an array, starting from the left, and then moves to the right with each entry. Parts of an array. The following one-dimensional array contains four first names. The array name, F name, is used to identify the array being referenced. Array elements are the data items being stored within the array. The index or subscript is used to identify the location of data being stored in the array. An index can only be represented as an integer value and begin with the value 0 or 1. Array operations. There are a number of operations required with the implementation of arrays. This video will provide details of all of the outlined operations, except the manipulation of array content. Array manipulation will be covered in detail in the next video. Array declaration. It is essential that the array be declared before it is used. To declare an array, you should state the name of the array, the size, which is the number of elements to be stored, and the data type. Example of array declaration. The example shows an array, hemp ID, declared to store a maximum of five string entries. There are two keywords used. These are the terms declare and array. The size of the array is enclosed in square brackets and shows the lower and upper bound. The data type of items being stored in the array is then stated. Array initialization. The initialization of an array allows all locations within the array to be given a starting value. Generally, the starting value used is dependent on the data type assigned to the array. Similar to variable initializations, arrays associate integer and real data types to the value 0 and 0.0, .0 respectively. 
string as well as character data types are also assigned an empty space as its initial value. Example of array initialization. The following example shows a for loop header, which contains the counter variable, x, as well as the starting and ending values of the loop. Each element of the array, hemp id, is being assigned an initial value with each iteration of the loop. Once the total number of iterations is achieved, all locations within the array will contain a starting value. The keyword, end for, then shows the termination of the loop. Array, entering values. Entering values into an array is best done using a loop. The for loop is ideal because it is set to repeat the same number of times as the size of the array. This allows each entered value to be placed into each location of the array. Example of entering values in an array. The following example shows a for loop header containing the counter variable i, as well as the starting and ending values of the loop. Each time the loop is executed, the user is prompted to enter an employee's ID. A read statement is then used to accept and store the entered value into the specified location within the array. The value stored in the counter variable, i, acts as the index to the specified array location. The illustration shows the sequencing of this process, with each ID number being placed in a specified location, as the array is being traversed. Once the total number of iterations is achieved, and all five entries made to the array, the keyword end for shows the termination of the loop. Array accessing values. If there is need to access a single item from the array, this can be done by accessing the element through its index or subscript. The example shows the accessing of the third employee's ID from the array hemp ID. Mention is made of the array's name, followed by the index number, enclosed within square brackets, of the location being accessed. Once the third employee's ID has been accessed, it will then be stored to the variable ID. This item can then be used for further manipulation or displayed through output. Array, printing values. When printing the content of the entire array, a loop is used to traverse each element and print the value stored. Example of printing items stored in an array. The following example shows how to print each employee ID stored in the array. Hemp ID. A for loop header contains the counter variable i and is used to enable the traversing of the array. Each time the loop is executed, the line employee ID is followed by the ID stored at the specified location will be shown. This process is carried out for all five IDs stored. Once the total number of iterations is achieved and all items within the array have been displayed, the keyword end for is used to terminate the loop. Array application. The following is used to show the application of all array principles discussed so far within this video. The problem statement requires the use of arrays to accept and store the ID number and name for 15 students. Once this is achieved, the algorithm should then display the ID number along with the student's name on the same line. The solution begins with the keyword start. It then shows the declaration of two arrays. The first array holds the student's ID and the second, the student's name. Each array has a capacity of 15 and has a data type of string. A declaration also shows the variable, count, being assigned as integer. A for loop is used to initialize each array. This is done by assigning a space to each element within both arrays. Moving or traversing within each array is controlled by the counter variable, count. The for loop terminates once all iterations have been completed and a starting value is placed at each array location. A second for loop is then necessary to prompt and accept the entries of student ID and student name for all students. Each prompt statement gives a clear indication as to the entry required. This is then followed by input statements which accept and store entries made to the respective arrays. The utilization of multiple for loops is essential and is based on the structure of actions as well as array operations being performed. The final actions of this solution uses a third for loop to display the ID number and name of each student in the same line. The counter variable, count, is used as the index and ensures that each student ID as well as student name corresponds and is based on the initial entries made. The solution then ends through the use of the keyword, stop. In the next video, 
we will discuss the concept of array manipulation. We will also generate pseudocode using one dimensional array that searches for and manipulates items stored. Thank you for being a part of another one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.